Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kurt Trailer Hitch Receiver here on our 2020 GMC Terrain. So this is what our trailer hitch looks like installed on the vehicle. As you can see here, it has a hidden design. Pretty much everything is going to be tucked away back here behind the bumper. The only thing we are going to be able to see is the receiver tube. And the receiver tube has a nice black powder coated finish, which is going to help it blend in well with the underside of the vehicle. It's also going to help protect the hitch from rust and corrosion over time, being that it is on the underside of the vehicle here, subjected to the elements. So adding a trailer hitch to your terrain here, it's going to be an excellent option because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now, obviously we can use the trailer hitch for towing, but if we wanted to hit some trails or just simply free up some space inside the vehicle for those long road trips, we can easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or a hitch mounted cargo carrier. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch here is going to provide us with a 3,500 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on our fully loaded trailer. And it also has a 525 pound tongue weight rating. That's gonna be the downward force here on the receiver tube. Now, keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, we need to verify the towing capacity of our vehicle in the owner's manual, and then abide by the lower of the two rated components, whether that's the hitch or the vehicle. So our trailer hitch here is gonna provide us with a class two rating. Therefore, we're gonna have plenty of those bike racks and cargo carriers to choose from. Make sure you check out our selection here at eTrailer. So if we take a closer look at the receiver tube, you can see we have a half inch diameter hitch pin hole there. That's gonna accept the standard half inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Now, I will wanna say that the hitch pin and clip is sold separately, and that's because most bike racks and cargo carriers are gonna come with their own. If you are towing a trailer though, and you're using a ball mount, you will need one of these if it doesn't already come with the ball mount. And then on the bottom of our receiver tube here, we're gonna have our safety chain loops. Those are gonna work great with both the S-type as well as the larger Clevis style. So now we got a couple measurements for you guys here that are gonna help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube. And that one will be useful when you're selecting your ball mount so you can get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And this one's gonna be right at 11 and a half inches. Uh, in regards to ground clearance, it does sit down there a little bit from the bumper, but honestly, I really don't see you guys having too many issues with that. Now we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. And this vehicle is right at four and a half inches, so that's gonna be useful when you're selecting your folding accessories. That way you can make sure while they're in the stowed position that they don't contact the vehicle. And for this measurement here, I would say the vast majority of bike racks that fold up or cargo carriers, you really shouldn't have too many issues, but it never hurts to measure. So in regards to the installation of this trailer hitch, it's pretty straightforward. Definitely something you guys can do at home by yourselves. You will need a few tools. Most of these are pretty common. You probably should have them already. Now there is one thing you may not have and that's a torque wrench. If you don't have one of those, we do sell cost effective options here at each trailer. You can pick up with your hitch or in most cases, you can rent these from free from local auto parts stores. So to start our installation today, we're gonna to get our vehicle up in the air here. And on the very bottom side of the lower fascia, we're gonna have two screws here. We're gonna to need to remove those using a T15 Torx bit. And we're gonna be saving these for reinstallation later. So next, once we have those two screws out, what we're gonna be doing on each side here, sort of behind the bumper, we're gonna have two 15 millimeter bolts that are attaching the exhaust hangers to the body of the vehicle. So we're gonna take a 15 millimeter socket, go ahead and remove those. Now they're kind of hard to get to, you're gonna to have to peel back on this plastic bumper fascia here. Remove those. So that's what our bolt looks like. We got one out here. We have two bolts on each side. We need to remove both of them. Now we don't have to worry about our exhaust falling down because it is still supported in the center. But once we have those two off, we're gonna need to maneuver our bracket away just like that. And now we'll repeat that same process on the other side. So now that we have both of those hangers free, you can see our exhaust is still in position here because we have this center hanger holding it in place. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing that center hanger from the rubber isolator. 
But before that, we need to take some sort of support strap or if you're working on the ground, some jack stands so we can support that exhaust here when we do break that hanger free, just like that. Now we're gonna take some sort of penetrating oil or lubricant. We're gonna spray down that hanger as best we can. Then we're gonna take either an exhaust hanger removal tool or a pry tool so we can break that free. Just like that. So next we're gonna be coming underneath the vehicle here to either side and we're gonna locate this large access hole here. So if we take some of our hardware, the spacer block you can see doesn't fit, nor does our carriage bolt. So what we need to do is we need to open up this hole a little bit here. We can use a file, a burr bit, or a step drill bit like we're using here. We're just gonna enlarge that, open it up a little bit, test fit our hardware to see if it's large enough, and then repeat until we can fit everything inside the frame. As you can see, we still got a little bit more to go here. So now, as you can see here, we can fit both the spacer block and the carriage bolt into the frame pretty easily. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come back with a paint marker. Um, if you have some clear coat or really any kind of spray paint, we just wanna make sure we cover that metal so it doesn't rust. And now we're gonna go ahead, jump over to the other side and do that same thing. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and insert all of our hardware into our frame. So we're gonna have three holes on each side, there, there, and there. Now what we need to do to get our hardware into that hole, we're going to take our coiled wire here, we're going to feed the coiled end through the hole we want the hardware to come through, and then we're going to fish it out the access hole. Then we're going to slip on a spacer block and thread on one of our carriage bolts. Now we'll push the spacer block up into the frame there, and then pull our carriage bolt through. Now we can pull it down into that hole. We'll repeat this process for the other two holes on this side and then the other three holes on the other side. Now with an extra set of hands, we can lift our hitch up into position. You're gonna have to pull down on the exhaust here and come underneath the bumper. And then you can feed all your pole wires through the respective holes. So now with all of our hardware into position, we're gonna take a three quarter inch socket and we're gonna tighten and torque each of our hardware to the specifications and in our instructions. Now with our hitch secure to the vehicle here, don't forget to raise your exhaust back up to position, tighten the two bolts on the side of each flange here and then the two screws on the bottom. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver here on our 2020 GMC Terrain.